Hey, what's up you guys? It's Ben Greenfield and I recently did a webinar with Wellness FX about how to recover faster and how to reduce inflammation. Uh, about 40 minutes of those, that, that webinar um, is available over at wellnessfx.com and I'll be sure and link to it in this video. But the first 20 minutes or so we had some scratchy audio and some technical difficulties going on. So today I'm, I'm here, uh, it's Friday afternoon, I'm in my office and I wanted to address some of the stuff that uh, kind of didn't get across um, during that webinar because uh, there, there were some really good questions that Jim asks that I or asked in the webinar that I wanted to make sure to get to you. So um, that being said, let's jump right in. And then if you like what you see, you can always access the rest of the webinar for free over at Wellness FX. And I'll put a link for that for you as well um, underneath the video. So let's go ahead and start with this. Jim asked me this. He said, you've created this really unique voice in the space of optimizing human potential and performance. What kicked you off this path? Um, that's a great question. And for me, what, what got me to want to delve into getting more out of the human body or getting it to bounce back faster was just the fact that um, I'm, a, I'm an average Joe. I have a job. I've got kids, I've got um, a, a lot of other things I want to do, like playing the, the guitar and cooking and reading. And for me, I need to squeeze a, a good amount of high quality exercise into a short period of time. And then I need to be able to consistently be able to exercise every day for like short bouts of, of intense exercise. For me, with my lifestyle, that's the way that I'm able to actually compete at a decently high level in something like Ironman Triathlon, uh, but still be able to squeeze it in. Now, one of the implications of that means that there is much higher intensity work being done, um, whether it be in the weight room or out on the road, and the recovery implications uh, get uh, a little bit uh, higher, and recovery becomes more important. And so what I was forced to do, or what I have been forced to do based off of the way that I train, is find ways to not only identify whether my body has recovered properly, but also bounce back more quickly from those workouts. So, um, you know, case in point, I've got all these different things that, that are kind of hanging around my house that I'll show you later on in this video, um, or I'll, I'll show you in the, the webinar with Jim and also talk about in this video. Um, and all these things, you know, from electrostimulation to, um, to low-level laser therapy to, uh, you know, foam roller. You can see my foam roller back there in the background behind me. Um, you know, both basic and advanced recovery concepts. These are things that, that I have around my house that I always have on hand and that I'm always using to help me bounce back like that. And then uh, a lot of the markers for inflammation that I'll talk about here in just a second are also really important for me to kind of keep my finger on. Um, to know where my body's at. So I'm going to tell you guys about that. But the reason that, that for me it becomes important is because I got to squeeze in a lot of high intensity, consistent training day after day. Um, and I find that the, the older I get, the more that tends to be the case. You know, I started off in my college days as a, as a collegiate tennis player and as a bodybuilder, and then kind of kind of went on from there. Um, and I know that I, I bounced back a lot more quickly back then than I do now, even at, at, at just age 31. Um, you know, just, just over the past 10 years, I've noticed the difference and I know it'll continue going forward. So it's of prime importance if you want to exercise consistently and also exercise hard and get the most bang for your buck. So, um, in, in terms of that, that, that's kind of what kicked me off on this path. The next question is, what do you think some of the themes over the last five to 10 years that have begun to emerge in terms of equipping normal people with the tools they need to become better athletes, um, what do I think are some of those themes over the last five to ten years? Um, so some of my thoughts here. Um, the first is something that I that I just alluded to, and that would be the portability and affordability of a lot of these different recovery tools that are now available that you could put in your house. So for example, when I wake up in the morning, I, I roll over in bed and I grab my smartphone, uh, which is off during the night. I turn it on. I put on my chest strap and I track my heart rate variability. Um, the other thing that I keep next to my bed is what's called a pulse oximeter that I can literally put on my fingertip and measure my oxygen saturation. Two very simple things that would have been a lot harder to get your hands on 20 years ago. I have a portable electrostimulation unit that allows me to deliver a, a low grade frequency to my muscles to enhance blood flow and recovery. Whether I need to manage an injury or whether I need to uh, basically recover faster from a workout. Um, 
My dog's beginning to tear apart his bed. Just a second. What's in? Get out of there. There you go. Um, so, can't guarantee he's going to behave running around in the office, but we'll find out. Okay, so the next thing... Quiet, boy. Quiet. Lay down. Lay down. So the next thing that... Um, that I have around the house, um, you know, that, that's, that's just in, you know, portable and affordable and wouldn't have been, you know, something that would have been so accessible to me before is I've got a, a cold low level laser. It's good. The one that I have is called a Kenko wave, but allows me to, to direct low level laser into an area that's been injured. Um, another thing is like portable magnets that you can wear. You know, there's a company, um, it's a multi-level marketing company, but it's, it still makes a solid product called Niken. And Niken has all these different magnetic applications for magnets you can stick on different areas to magnets you can wear while you're asleep. And these enhance blood flow. Um, you've got uh, products like the Game Ready, uh, which is a compressive boot or compressive wrap that puts a, like an icy cold surge of ice water through the wrap. Uh, while also providing compression at the same time so you don't get what's called backflow of lymphatic fluid. That's something that you can get for about $1,500, which is on the higher end of the price range, but can really help you bounce back more quickly if you're serious about, you know, like running, sprinting, cycling, things that use your legs. Um, slightly uh, less expensive versions of that are available in a device called the Recovery Boot. There's also something similar to that that's kind of a wireless high-end version called the Normatec. And these are other things that you can get for your home that are, are portable and relatively affordable compared to, to the fact that they would have only been available as a unit that cost tens of thousands of dollars in a physical therapy clinic, you know, a decade ago. And then you've got little things, you know, like the, like the foam roller that's behind me, um, you know, like little muscle tracks and sticks, like, you know, this kind of stuff, you know, the tiger tail, the muscle track, the myo rope, all sorts of things like this that you can, you can rub up and down on muscle. And it's just little things like that, that, you know, 10 years ago, you wouldn't have seen hanging around a lot in terms of the average athlete's house that, that are available to all of us now to work with. So portability and affordability of a lot of these home units, um, You've also got stuff like uh, like vibration platforms, and there's another thing called pulsed electromagnetic field therapy, or PEMF. Those are two other things that you can get for your home to help you to recover faster. I know this stuff sounds geeked out, but a lot of it does help. Okay, the next thing uh, that, that I think that, that we're going to see as an emerging trend is, or, and that we have seen as an emerging trend, is just the, the ability to use your smartphone. Um, you know, I use like the Sweet Beat app for heart rate variability tracking. There's a there's a suite of apps made by a company called Azumio, A Z U M I O, and basically with Azumio you can track your, your stress levels, your heart rate variability, um, your resting heart rate. <laughs> My dog's getting excited. I'm gonna I'm gonna stick him out here. Okay, go on. You go. Hopefully he doesn't do too much damage out there. Um, so you've got all these different smartphone programs. Um, like I mentioned, the Sweet Beat. You've got the Zumio app. Um, you've got an app made by a company called RestWise. That's another good one. Um, Training Peaks has a way to monitor your, your metrics when you wake up in the morning. Um, and by the way, just leave a comment under the video if you, if you didn't catch any of this stuff or, or you need links and stuff like that. Um, but, but all these different tools that are available on your smartphone kind of make anybody who's got like an iPhone or an Android have the ability to instantly identify a lot of these metrics, you know, in their pocket. And kind of related to that, the next thing that I, that I think is an emerging trend is just the, the whole ability to do biomarker evaluation. Like you see with a company like Wellness FX, where you can go in and you can, you can literally just wander into your local lab corp with a requisition form and give blood, give saliva give urine and be able to identify all this stuff at a, at a relatively affordable rate compared to what it was, you know, again, five, 10 years ago, a lot, a lot of us just couldn't do this stuff. It was too expensive. Um, the other thing that I think is, is really more accessible or at least more, um, I guess, top of mind nowadays is the ability to have a lot of, of supplements and dietary protocols in your life that are really, really good at controlling inflammation. Um, proteolytic enzymes, that's one thing that I've got around my house to, to basically break up fibrinogen, help me to recover more quickly without being sore. I keep uh, basically like a high dose uh, curcumin extract around. I've got this stuff called, uh, called phenocane. Um, these are just some, some sample packs. I've got a bottle in the kitchen 
but you know, phenocane has got like a like a high dose curcumin extract, um, boswellia, phenylalanine, and natokinase. And all these do a lot of the similar things that ibuprofen does in terms of, of limiting soreness uh, without kicking your, your kidneys or your gut quite as hard as some of those those uh, those non steroidal anti inflammatory drugs. We've got things like uh, like fish oil as an anti inflammatory, like a good high quality omega three fish oil. Um, you know, there's another thing that I take that's like a blend of a bunch of, of herbal anti-inflammatories like cherry juice and, and ginger and garlic mixed up with like a, a high, high quality glucosamine chondroitin blend. That one's called Capreflex. That's another example of an anti-inflammatory blend that I've just got lying around my house. And, you know, the ability to, to be able to use targeted anti-inflammatory protocols that are still healthy for the body, but that help you bounce back more quickly. That's another trend that I, that I think is is pretty cool. That that this kind of stuff is just super accessible to us now. Um, so those are some some of the main things that I that I think in terms of recovering more quickly from workouts and be able to bounce back more quickly are things that you can really take advantage of. Um, so uh, Jim also asked me, how do you figure out if you're overtraining or over recovering? Um, there are some a lot of things that you can do um, for both a, a, a qualitative in a quantitative perspective. So let's start with the easy stuff, the low hanging fruit, as far as qualitative variables that we can identify to help us figure out if we're overtraining. Um, one would just be simple morning resting heart rate measurements. If you see your heart rate fluctuating on a consistent basis by more than 5%, typically 5% over and above what your normal resting heart rate is, that is that, that's a sign. It, by itself, it, it, it may not be that big of a deal, but if it's associated with a cluster of other symptoms, some of the other stuff I'm going to talk to you about can be an issue. So if your resting heart rate is, say, 50, and 5% of 50 is, uh, what, uh, two, two and a half. So let's say your resting heart rate is 50, and you're seeing values that are like, you know, 53, 54 consistently, then that can be a marker that your body is starting to have a more difficult time bouncing back from whatever you're doing to it from a physical activity standpoint. Um, another thing is an inability to reach as high a heart rate as you can normally reach during your exercise sessions. Again, something that you can very easily test with a heart rate monitor, but let's say that, that usually during your intervals you're able to bump your heart rate up to 170 or, or 180 or something like that, and all of a sudden you're having trouble getting above 160. That can be a sign, especially that your sympathetic nervous system is overtrained, that's having a hard time activating the, the sinoatrial node in your heart um, via your vagus nerve and telling that thing to, to get up and go. And that can be a sign that you're, you're running from the lion too much and that system is getting overtrained. Um, another thing is body mass. Um, if you notice that you suddenly lose more than about 2% body weight, um, and, and that's just, you know, if you're weighing yourself every day and all of a sudden you're, you're, you're 2% lost, just bam, all of a sudden, that can be a sign that you're training too hard, that your body is starting to, to dump a lot of fluids. The other thing that you tend to see, um, and this is more, more typically related to like high, high cortisol, um, sympathetic nervous system overtraining again, is you get fluid retention, water retention, and you're just constantly bloated and, and your body mass again can be up when that happens as well. Um, Loss of appetite, that's another sign, another qualitative variable that you can look at. Um, soreness, being consistently sore, especially sore to the touch, another qualitative variable you can look at and that usually also manifests in a loss of certain ranges of motion. So if you've got a dynamic warm up that you usually go through and you suddenly can't move through that range of motion as well as you were able to before, that can be a sign that you're, that you're starting to get overtrained, that there's a lot of tissue adhesions going on, probably a lot of connective tissue cross-linking, some scar tissue formation, and a lot of signs that you could do a, a better job recovering or you need to give yourself some R&R. Some &R. Um, there are mood state scores. This is something that, you know, a company like RestWise, which, which basically lets you keep track of a matrix of mostly qualitative variables on a daily basis, they have a, an energy score, a mood score, and a well-being score. And if you're consistently scoring low on each of those variables, that, that's another cluster of signs that, that you're either going to get sick or you're on the edge of overtraining. And it's pretty amazing how this stuff can, can predict, you know, that, that, and all of a sudden, you know, you get congested and, and runny nose and sore throat, you go back and look at your variables and they were all getting low leading up to that point. So you can identify this stuff and, and nip, for example, getting sick or getting injured in the bud. 
Um, now, the, the other thing you can look at would be just your hydration status. Um, typically, you'll just want to pay attention to your urine color. Of course, you know, taking like a high-dose vitamin B is going to influence that and cause it to be kind of like a, a neon yellow. But, you know, consistently yellow or orange urine in the absence of, of like, a, like a vitamin B intake can be a, kind of a, a, a warning sign. And then we get into some of the biomarkers that you can test. Um, HSCRP is one that's super, super easy to test. You can look at that, that C-reactive protein as a sign of total body inflammation. That's something you can test through Wellness FX. Um, it's something that uh, shouldn't stay elevated for more than about 48 hours after a tough workout. And if HSCRP levels are, are consistently elevated, or you test in a rested and, and recovered state, or a state that you think is rested and recovered, and your HSCRP values are high, that's a red flag. Interleukin is another one. It's not as commonly tested, but it's one that you can test. Um, your omega-3 tissue saturation, as well as your omega-3 index, which is which is basically your DHA EPA ratios. Those are other things that you can test. I would say the more valuable of those two that, that Wellness FX can also do for you is an omega-3 index, a DHA EPA ratio test. If your omega-3 index is low, that's another sign that you need to probably um, take in a, a little bit lower intake of omega-6 fatty acids from vegetable oil, seeds, nuts, stuff like that, and probably step up your intake of like a high-quality fish oil, like a triglyceride-based fish oil, or like a cod liver oil, or a marine algae source of, of omega-3s, or something of that nature. Um, a couple of other things that I kind of already alluded to, but that are really helpful. Pulse oximetry, a pulse oximeter that you can put on your fingertip when you wake up in the morning. You generally want that to be above 96%. Okay, that's a good sign that you've got good oxygen saturation going on. If that begins to dip down consistently, that can be a sign that you're overtrained. And then heart rate variability. And I really geeked out on heart rate variability a little bit more in, in the second part of, of this series that, that actually has good audio with Jim. Um, but if you're tracking your heart rate variability and it does one of two things, it can be a pretty good sign that you're overtrained. Number one, your heart rate variability. Not your heart rate, but your heart rate variability. The, the interval of time between, between heartbeats that, a, that an app like SweetBeat can test for you or, or an EM Wave 2 unit or a BioForce unit or an Ithlete unit, or the Azumio phone app, or any of these, these protocols can test for you. If you tend to see that consistently low, like below 90, that can be a red flag. And if you see it consistently bounce around from day to day, that can also be a red flag. Consistently low usually means you're overtrained with too much endurance work. Um, consistently bouncing around from day to day usually means you're overtrained with too much sympathetic nervous system, fight or flight intensity type of work. But that can also be a really, really good thing to track. Um, probably the only thing I forgot to mention was your sleep quality. Um, that can be a, a really good sign of overtraining status. Waking up in the night constantly to pee, that can really be a sign that you're hypercortisolic, that your sympathetic nervous system could be overtrained. Being consistently tired throughout the day, uh, feeling like you got to take naps when you're driving, um, just being exhausted at night, that can be a sign that you're overtrained. Um, typically that, that's, that's too much endurance training, too much parasympathetic nervous system. Um, stimulation. So sleep quality is another big one as well. Um, so, so those are some of the biggies. As far as the, you know, the, the top things that of those things that I just mentioned that I personally track, um, I look at heart rate variability every morning. When I'm leading up for those last couple weeks leading into a race, I also look at pulse oximetry using the, the fingertip pulse oximeter. I look at sleep quality. Like if I'm always waking up at 3 a.m., 4 a.m. to pee, to me that's a sign that I'm hypercortisolic. Um, the other thing that I look at is uh, my my level of soreness slash range of motion because I usually am doing a dynamic warm up at least three or four times a week, and so you know I know if I'm not moving through proper range of motion with a lateral lunge or a side to side movement, a lot of times it's a pretty good sign. You know my hips are locked up, I'm not moving properly. I, I need to to throw a recovery day and you know get some foam rolling and some you know magnesium bath soaks and stuff like that in there. So. Um, all right, so those are, you know, that, that kind of covers what got messed up with the audio when Jim and I were doing the first part of the segment with Wellness FX. Of course, I'll put a, a link to the second part of the segment under this video. Hopefully that was helpful. If you have questions, leave them as a comment under this video. Um, check out my website at bengreenfieldfitness.com. I'm going to go make sure that my dog is not chewing up the couch, <laughs> which he's very likely to do. And uh, I hope that was helpful for you. So I'm Ben Greenfield from bengreenfieldfitness.com over and out.